Today I want to talk about one of my favorite compressors that helps me get started when I'm crafting just about any vocal sound. And I think that it's one of the most underrated compressor plugins out there. It's extremely easy to use, it doesn't color the sound very much, and just allows me to get where I need to go while starting to shape a vocal sound. And what I'm talking about today is the Waves MV2. Now the reason that it helps shape a vocal sound so well, because it uses a combination of high level and low level compression. In today's video I'm going to talk about what high level and low level compression are and how they work together in this plugin, when this compressor is useful, when it's not, and then I'll show you the interface and how to get started using it. Now I will say right out of the gate, this can be used on more than just vocals, that just happens to be how I like to use it and what I mostly use it on. But if you use it on more than just vocals, leave a comment down below and let us know. What is up guys, Alex Manic Creates here, I'm a professional audio engineer, mixer, and producer. And on this channel we talk about all things music production and audio engineering and just help you make music you can be proud of. So first, what is low level compression? To put it simply, low level compression is the opposite of standard or high level compression. In standard compression, when a signal is above the set threshold, it gets compressed or attenuated. With the low level compression setting in the MV2, any signal below a certain threshold gets compressed upwards, resulting in increased gain. Basically it's taking the low level signals and boosting them up while leaving the high level signals where they were. So when do you use or not use the MV2? Now I do encourage you to go play around with it, try it on as many different things as you can. For me personally, I don't use it on much more than vocals. Now one of the main ways that I like to use it is when I have a vocal that was not compressed when it was recorded. I like to just even out the vocal a little bit without coloring the sound very much before I actually put on the compressors that I would normally use. I also find it very handy to just help even out podcasts or dialogue while still making it sound natural but just reining in the dynamics a little bit. Now personally I don't really like to use it as the only compressor on a vocal, it's not really that purpose for me, as I said it's very natural sounding and just helps even it out, but it doesn't really bring any character to it or give me that compressed sound, which is great for what I use it for, but then I like to add compressors on after it to get a little bit more of an actual compression sound in a track. One of the downsides for me that's actually a really good upside for a lot of beginner producers and engineers is the fact that there's not a lot of controls. You can't adjust the attack and the release and you don't really know exactly what it's doing. It does a lot under the hood, which ironically is part of the attraction to it. Now let me just go over the interface and the controls of the plugin. So as you can see the MV2 is very simple. Its interface actually only has three different dials on it uh, and a couple meters. So first off you have the low level control over here and the high level control and in between them they have the low level meter and the high level meter. And basically how Waves describes these is the cut and boost meter. And then of course you have the output with an output meter and an output attenuation. As you may notice on the output it actually has no gain on it, it does the gain automatically within the settings as you set the high level and low level controls. And then on the output you have just a trim to attenuate it if it's too much. So on the high level attenuation meter you see the same kind of gain reduction that you'd see on any other compressor. And then on the low level boost meter you're seeing how much is it boosting and then you'll see it kind of dip as the signal becomes below the threshold that it's trying to boost. So for example right now nothing is actually going through the plugin, which means as I boost the low level control you can see that it's gaining what's going through it because all of the signal right now is below the threshold because there is no signal. I'm just going to play some vocals and bring them up so you can hear what it's doing and see how the meters are reacting to the vocals that are going through it. I want to follow where she goes. I think about her and she knows it. I want to let her take control. Cause every time that she gets close, yeah She pulls me in enough to keep me guessing mm -hmm. As it's playing, you can see that they're kind of working together. If it's too loud and you're actually getting some attenuation, well then it's obviously not compressing the low level as much because there's not any low level in that exact part. But as soon as there's less gain reduction on the high level meter, you see a bit more of that boost coming back on the low level meter. They very much work together to even out the vocals in a very natural and fluid sounding way. 
and that's about it. It's just really easy to use. So I highly recommend checking this plugin out, especially if you're a newer producer engineer. This is a great, really simple way to get a compressed vocal or a compressed track without having to know a whole lot about what it's doing. It is normally $99. However, it goes on sale for $49 or $29 very regularly. But that is it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in more music production tutorials or plugin tutorials, you can find my custom playlists on the screen of other videos just like this one. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.